Hello chess friends and welcome to you out of chess channel and welcome back to our coverage of the 2010 world chess championship match between two legends of the sport between Vishwanathan Anand and Veselin Topalov. So we are now in the game two of the super event. We have covered already the beautiful game one in which Topalov destroyed, really dismantled uh, Vish's Greenfield defense in only 30 moves, which was in my opinion really one of the best games that I've seen by Topalov, really immortal, great tactical shots he played in that game. Now we're in the game too, as I said, uh, Vichy has to make something out of this game because you don't have so many chances in this World Championship matches, I think, because you play only six games with white and you play only six games with black. So if you don't make anything out of your games with white, the uh, World Championship match could be over for you. So as I said, although still there are many games uh, that have to be played, but still I think it was already, already a critical moment of this uh, super match between Topalov and Anand. Let's see now what happened. Anand played, as I said, with the white pieces and open now with the move d4 we have knight f6 by topalov c4 after e6 we have the anti nimzo or counter nimzo indian setup not allowing after move knight to c3 the spinning idea by uh by black in the continuation the game transposes now into the queen's game the client structure and now vishy goes for the immortal for the most dynamic open for the so-called catalan opening and the catalan is really the sharpest uh, opening that you can get out of the queen's game the client structure the game game becomes already already quite imbalanced if of course black wants to play the imbalanced game because basically black has two choices black can go into the more solid uh, close Catalan with maybe bishop to e7 bishop to b4 maybe even c6 or can go into the open the, the position then of course explodes in the center after move d takes c4 and of course you can guess what uh, Topalov is doing Topalov plays d takes c4 invites basically Vichy into an open battle again I really love the fact that uh, Topalov played also dynamic games here no one choose some boring openings like maybe the Berlin defense or something no they played very the sharpest openings in the super match so as I said also in the beginning of course coverage in my opinion the world championship match in 2010 was really one of the best uh, championships that I've seen in my life so in the continuation uh, Vichy continues with the move bishop to g2 a6 uh, the idea in some occasions is to fix the structure with b5 c6 creating a solid structure there and then slowly but surely maybe when you get out of this attack of the light square bishop then maybe you could push the pawns you can maybe uh, get this four versus two situation here on the queen side it's of course not possible immediately because the light square bishop is very powerful but then afterwards maybe if you as i said make further progress when you improve the uh, minor piece activity then maybe uh, you can then push the pawns further so in the continuation knight to e5 uh here the continuation c5 was played by topalov also bishop to b4 is quite a proper line also knight to d5 are opportunities in the continuation c5 played by Topalov so he's now playing now really the most aggressive way you don't want to play of course d takes c5 because then queen takes d1 will happen and then you lose the privilege of castling after king to d1 your king is stuck in the center so that's why here Vichy goes with knight to a3 we have c takes d4 and after knight takes c4 uh, still Topalov has an extra pawn he now took the pawn on d4 although White's compensation for the lost pawn is now a beautiful piece of activity. We have to say it. Both knights are very powerful. The bishop is uh, uh, here on this uh, beautiful diagonal. This bishop still has a great activity. On the other hand, uh, black likes where bishop is a little bit paralyzed by its own pawn structure. So that's why I think it's a decent compensation. Maybe not the optimal compensation for the lost pawn, but at least you gain something now. As I said, you have some attacking chances with your minor pieces. Bishop to c5, uh, controlling, of course, uh, here b6 and d6 squares in the continuation we have now kingside casting kingside casting also played by topalov bishop to d7 and now after move knight to d5 topalov makes a very important choice now he locks finally the long diagonal for the light poor bishop i'm not sure whenever uh, white is going to trade the bishop for a knight here because the light square bishop is simply too valuable in the in the catalan opening uh, the light square bishop is simply your best minor piece so you should never i think never trade it off for the centralized knights on d5 and now topalov is preparing as i said he's preparing b5 bishop to b7 knight to d7 maybe even knight to c6 challenging one of these knights maybe f6 is also an opportunity to kick away this knight from the center of the board so as i said you have to know your theory here if you make maybe tiny little inaccurate move then i think uh one side could take over so i think it's really also a battle of opening theory who knows more about these types of structures so in the continuation vichy goes with rook to c1 a beautiful move 
there are certain discovered attack possibilities against the bishop. Uh, here, the continuation knight to d7 was played by Topalov, and then from knight to d3 that bishop plays, we have now bishop to a7. The bishop retreats now on a beautiful square, protects till the d4 pawn and keeps uh, an eye also maybe then afterwards on the f2 pawn because if something clears, then of course the bishop on a7 could be really also a dangerous piece. So in the continuation, we have now bishop to a5 played by Vichy. He's using now the dark square problems so that are really present in the game c7 b6 c5 d6 are really clear targets that are the squares that we want to attack of course in the position and here queen to e7 a huge decision by uh Vesely topalov because b6 is actually not a possibility here after b6 you have this one bishop to b4 and if you play for instance knight to b4 of course your rook is hanging so you have to now step back with the rook and now you have this one knight to d6 very very dangerous the rook is hanging the bishop is hanging so in my opinion this is not a good game anymore for um uh for black if you retreat of course with the rook again we'll play simply uh the bishop and then again the rook on f faked or maybe on e side wherever you go with the rook it will be taken for sure so this is not working so c b6 would have been really really tempting but of course uh, uh topalov sensed the blood here he played now queen to e7 because also bishop to d5 now it's not working here for uh, white uh, because you could maybe try e takes d5 and after bishop to b4 it seems some that something went wrong again uh, here in black's position but after queen to f6 you can pick up the rook but look at this uh, d takes c4 comes again with an attack against the knight now you can maybe just grab one pawn if you of course retreat then we'll still pick up the knight if you try this one bishop to g7 king to g7 rook to c4 and look at this uh, we have three minor pieces against the minor piece and the rook this should be of course completely completely winning uh, for black especially because of the fact that we have still the light square bishop and white lost the light square bishop so now in the next couple moves we can play b5 maybe bishop to b7 including somehow the queen uh, into the attack and maybe threaten also some checkmates on g2 so this tactical sequence you see uh, after move uh, queen to e7 bishop to uh, d5 and bishop to b4 is simply not working so here queen to b3 uh, Vichy continues to pressure on dark square here in the continuation we have now rook to b8 queen to a3 a huge decision here by uh vichy anand he's now trying to simplify the game by trading off the queens which makes really sense when you think about it harder because the queen is okay here it's uh, an active piece here but it's i think the key defender of the square c7 d6 it controls many many squares so that's why vish is trying to get rid of the key defender of the square so now by trading off the queens then we can use maybe the d6 square then maybe we can again use our attack on the dark square diagonal with the bishop so it's i think a huge decision but actually it's i think also the correct decision because after queen to a3 vish should have played knight to a3 here and the game is pretty solid although black has an extra pawn but the c file is also here taken already by by white uh we have certain opportunities maybe to include somehow this other pieces into the game so it's not so easy for black to play the game especially because of this bad bishop that's paralyzed uh also by its own pawn structure but uh, Vichy took with the pawn he played now b takes a3 and he probably didn't want to this knight to get here on b4 because in some occasions this knight it could be very active on the square uh, but actually this move b takes a3 should have been met here uh, by Vesley Topalov with this move knight to c5 knight to c5 would i think solve many many positional problems in in white uh in, pardon me in black's position and for knight to c5 what you could do maybe is now again this idea bishop to d5 but even without the queens on the board still uh, this would be a dangerous position after e takes d5 look at this knight to b6 is going to happen uh, look at this knight takes d3 c takes d3 we just step back and here i think black should be much much better especially because of this beautiful bishop here although this knight is powerful uh, the d3 pawn is weak so i would really not love to play anymore in this game from uh, from white's perspective so see knight to c5 would have been i think this liberating move uh, for for topalov but instead of this move knight to c5 he played knight to f6 and this 
is slightly worse because Vichy it plays immediately knight to e5. He takes over here. He takes out now a very important square for uh, both of these knights by black. And the problem is now you cannot get your knight back here to d7 because you sim simply play a rook takes c8. And then for rook takes c8, the knight is falling here on d7. So, okay, this word tiny little inaccuracy is still this is playable for black. I'm not saying that this is losing because you play knight to f6 instead of knight to c5. But it's really strange how you can make tiny little inaccuracies just by a simple knight moves so you still the knights are very very powerful but as i said now in my opinion white regrouped white has now also some chances especially because of this powerful knight in the center so you see also the knight the most important uh sequence about this move knight to c5 is it's actually you're challenging this very very important knight on d3 so here in the continuation after move knight to e5 uh, uh topala went into this line rook to e8 rook to c2 Vichy is now doubling up the rooks on the c file we have now b6 and after bishop to d2 bishop to b7 and now a very important move rook to c1 uh played by uh Vichy Anand. and you see now the problem is now you cannot compete on the c file you have lost the battle on the c file that's now the main issue because if you go into this line rook takes c8 rook takes rook takes bishop takes now we get this one and knight to c6 is actually trapping even uh here the bishop and a7 so this is not working you see you cannot compete on the c file vichy is down upon but has now a great activity with both of these knights both bishops are very very dangerous and the c file attack is causing now i think here black already a headache but but this still is playable when it comes to computer relations if you're of course uh stockfish engine you would maybe probably get out of this attack but i think um let's flip the board imagine you're playing this kind of a position with with the black pieces how would you really feel i would not feel so good because especially on the c file i feel so so much pressure uh the bishops are really blocked out they're not controlling anything so in my opinion i uh, i would really love to play more this game from white's perspective than than uh than, than with the black piece so in the continuation rook to b8 we have now the move f4 uh, bishop to b8 we have now the move a4 trying a5 bishop to a5 maybe uh, getting also the bishop into the game we have now a5 by topalov he's preventing this idea and now knight to c6 here by uh Vichyana. bishop to c6 and now rook to c6 look at this the rook is coming more and more into the game in the continuation now h5 played by topalov a rook to c4 attacking now the pawn on on uh, on the e4 and now comes maybe even the main mistake now in the game here by topalov he played now the move knight to e3 he probably was annoyed by this uh, attack of whites here against the pawn on d4 but knight to e3 is actually not working what he should have played is maybe knight to g4 if rook takes d4 happens then we have bishop to a7 and there are certain threats with b5 this would be i think very very important uh, to defend here for white i'm not sure how white even should defend this position even if you get the king out even if you get the rook out still a knight to an f2 is going to happen so i i really left more this move knight to g4 uh, it would cause, I think, new uh, tactical problems for white. But actually, what Topalov did, he played knight to e3, and he thought, okay, probably white is not going to uh, give up his bishop pair. Probably he's not going to give up uh, his bishop for the knight. But actually, that's what Vichy did. He played simply bishop to e3. After d takes e3, we have now bishop to f3. Very, very important move here by uh, uh vishi he's controlling now the e4 square he's controlling also the g4 square and he's also attacking the pawn on h5 here g6 uh was played by topalov because he wanted to play more freely uh with the knight uh, then of course uh the h5 pawn would have been hanging so that's why he played g6 first fixing the pawn structure but now vishi just grabs the pawn and now this bishop to a7 the whole concept is not working because the pawn is standing in the way so as i said Topalov had some chances, now white is taking over, I think, uh, from this point on, okay, still it's a battle, still it's a struggle, but uh, I think, again, I would love to play more this game from white's perspective, especially because of this beautiful peace activity, this is a double pawn structure, this is a weak pawn, our bishop is much, much more active, the knight will come in on e5, so when it comes to peace activities, white should be much, much better, and the engine also loves now more white positions so rook to a bishop to a7 rook to b3 rook to d4 rook to c7 we have uh, bishop to b8 rook to c5 attacking the pawn 
pointed now after rook j5 look at this uh this pawn is taken we have now really really uh oh, very important pass points and the most important thing also to notice is that the passer is actually covered by the bishop so it's not so far away that we can maybe promote here to queen we need maybe six six seven tempi with the pawn and then with the support of the bishop this could be very very dangerous for black so rook to c8 the king to g2 rook to c2 we have now a3 uh, rook to a2 again not the optimal move by Topalo, maybe knight to d5, getting more pieces into the attack, maybe you get, uh, you can get a check, king to g7, maybe a rook to a7, but I think we can try to do some perpetual, still of course, white has this passer, this should be better, but after move rook to a2 that Topalo played, uh, Vichy goes simply with knight to b4, he's covering now uh, this square a3, in the continuation bishop to b4, we have uh, a takes b4, knight to d5 now, and Vichy simply makes further progress with the b5 pawn this is not stoppable anymore because um, look at this we have two connected passers okay here rook to a4 was played by topalov uh, the vichy simply took a rook takes a4 but now after bishop to d5 c takes d5 we have now the supported passer here by the rook the rook has to step back we have b7 and after rook to b8 king to f3 d4 king to e4 actually in this position uh, Topalov resigns. So both of these pawns will be taken. The rook is always overloaded to the defense of the pro potential promotion on b8. We'll pick simp simply both of these pawns and then we'll push another passer. We'll get or even maybe the king closer here uh, towards uh, towards the rook and this should be game over. Really, really incredible endgame here by uh, Vesin Topalov and Vishwanathan Anand. We have to say it, Topalov had some chances in the game but Vichy played here almost a perfect game. He played this wild Catalan and surprised also his opponent, I think, with this idea, with this early queen trade, with this move queen to a3, and then afterwards, so, uh, you see, the game was much more simplified and Vichy took over in the game. So, okay, this is now the result. One win for Vichy, one win for uh, one win for Rishi, one for, uh, win for Wesley Topalov. We'll cover, of course, more game from the super event. Be prepared, this is not over. This will be still one of the most dynamic world championship matches of all time so see you soon with some more videos and what to say chest is the best of course